Our final speaker of Act One is a creative performer and therapeutic practitioner. She integrates the healing power of authentic con conversation, mu uh, conversation, music, and art to explore the stories we tell ourselves. I also taught her improv when she was in high school, so I'm so proud to see her here today. Please welcome to stage Janine Williams. Thank you so much. Um, Andrew, you'll be uh, not so surprised to hear there's not much improv here. <laughs> I'm sure as every speaker takes the stage, at some point you're all thinking, what's their story? And personally, as a speaker up here with all your eyes on me, just feeling like a princess, I'm thinking, gather round, children, it's story time. <laughs> My name is Janine Williams, and today I ask you, what lens do you frame your life story or personal narrative with? Do you have a different narrative in your self-talk and the story you share with the world? Does your social media reflect your true self, aspirational self, or something entirely different? This evening, I will present storytelling through the lens of narrative therapy. You'll hear how this therapeutic approach developed narrative metaphors in film and how to rewrite your script as you like it. Narrative therapy is a collaborative therapeutic approach focused on life stories. I like to think of it as selecting rose-colored glasses for both our internal and external monologue. Developed in the 1980s by Michael White and David Epstein, they sought to empower their clients to externalize problems from the self and rewrite narratives to accurately reflect personal values and foster hope. This theory is grounded in an idea that our identity is fluid and can be, con can be creatively constructed. Our own narratives, much like film and social media, are shaped and influenced by cultural, social, societal, and familial factors, as well as our own experiences and thoughts. By externalizing problems, we can reclaim our narrative to examine challenges without feeling personally flawed and reauthor our story. Examples, you don't have anxiety and you don't have depression, but anxiety may plague you and depression may sit on you sometimes. So consider who keeps knocking on your door, bringing you down and taking up your good energy. In narrative therapy, this question would more typically be framed with, if you could name or label that problem, what would you call it? But I like to add a little pizzazz. After reviewing personal stories, narrative therapy maps out what realms this problem may pop up in, how it might be challenging and perspectives on this issue. Thus, you are the expert on your own life and can collaboratively with your therapist explore alternatives or unique outcomes. This includes review of thin, simple explanations or rich, complex narratives with room for creative problem-solving possibilities, thickening the narrative through incorporating strengths, values, and recall of the times one has sidestepped the influence of the problem can empower us to understand our identity. Oh, it's so hard, you guys, to do consonants when there's an echo. Our identity and challenges very different. <laughs> we can engage in this process independently with the support of a therapist or in a group setting. This is how reauthoring takes place. I now present three films for your consideration on authorship and lens. The Shape of Water, Curious George, and The Grand Seduction. In The Shape of Water, Eliza, a marginalized mute woman and a misunderstood amphibious alien develop a deep connection in the top secret FBI testing center. They are both othered by society in different ways, but through their con connection, forge their own narrative and break free. Their bond and fight against an oppressive world nicely captures the essence of narrative therapy reauthoring. This film suggests that we can reclaim our stories even when society views us through lenses of invisibility or weakness. 
Next, we turn to Curious George. The man with the yellow hat accidentally adopts cutie patootie George, where they go on various adventures in the big city. While the man with the yellow hat often worries about cleaning up George's messes, George doesn't seem to once anticipate failure. He only sees an adventure. George's curiosity and mistakes can be presented as a growth opportunity narrative. Narrative therapists might use the man in the yellow hat and the curious little monkey's different perspectives as a metaphor for how we too can interpret our mistakes in life. Like George, we sometimes stumble while exploring new things, but this is how we learn, grow, and often find meaning in life. Lastly, the Canadian film, The Grand Seduction, offers a narrative of community marketing. In a small village in coastal Newfoundland, the fishing folk come together to reauthor their village's story and charm a doctor into staying permanently as their full-time physician. While on the brink of economic collapse, they imagine their home as a place worth staying in. They orchestrate conversations and different events to lure the doctor into staying. The film beautifully captures how stories are influenced by our social environment and are often co-constructed. While the narrative shared with Dr. Lewis may not have been entirely honest, the power of reconstructing narratives with collective strength can charm even the haughtiest of critics. Feedback and collaboration can help us rewrite our stories and with the right support for the better. It begs another question, who has helped you to co-author your narrative and do they thicken up your story with your strengths? In life and film, we all thrive on the moments where the problem is no problem at all. With a rosy red lens, small victories can help us realize we are capable of change. In life and film, these problems can sometimes seem to come within, but we long to escape these labels and shame spirals. Externalizing problems can also foster resilience, like Eliza sneak past the judgments, like Mr. Yellow Hat and George accept the impulses, and as Newfoundland's fishing village, conquer the preconceived notions. Seeing the world with a rosy tint can take our small truths and make them strong. So please don your rosy red lenses and rewatch some home movies. You're the storyteller now. Thank you.